So we, EricCommonWealth.com, of course, C-O-M-M-V-A-U-L-T.com. Click on the free trials tab. You're presented with two options. First is the Commonwealth trial. Second one is the VMware or, or VM backup and recovery. We are going to select the Commonwealth trial. And, and what's the difference, right? So the Commonwealth trial is the one that you install. Um, your, you can install your Windows servers, uh, the, the media agent on the Windows server, Linux box, whereas the VM backup and recovery is essentially that. It's a, a VSA agent, so a virtual server agent. Oh, we're going to click on the start your 30 day trial. You're going to put your information in there, um, your email. Click on the uh, acknowledge and click on download my trial. Okay, so from here, you're going to see an email from Commonwealth. What's cool about this is they give you a, um, a click on, they give you a video on how to install it, right? Which is nice. So, yeah, it's kind of nice. But um, the good thing about this email, right, is you're going to get, you know, if they want to talk about information in the future, about uh, until they, they can send you emails on their product updates and whatnot. So it's kind of nice for them to, uh, for, for the, to have that. So your email and this activation code are critical because they're going to come into play when you install. It's going to prompt you um, along the way to put the use uh, the email you, you signed up with and then the that activation code. About two days later, you're going to get an email and it's going to ask you um, to basically register your account essentially, right? And it's going to give you a link to, you've already, uh, since if you've already downloaded the the version of Commvault, the install version, but it's going to give you a link anyway to cloud.commvault.com to do just that. And then also about a week, less than a week after that, you're going to get a welcome to Commvault account, which is going to give you access to the ma.commvault website, which gives you access to the other features it has, such as is it putting up a ticket or creating an incident whatnot. Um, so first things first, we're going to go to the cloud.ma, rather cloud.commvault.com website. It's important to note that your ma.commvault.com account and your cloud.commvault.com account are two different logins. And then you just scroll down until you see uh, version 10, version, you know, we're going to click on version 10. So, um, Let's click on version 10, service pack, service pack 15. Once you do that, it opens up and you have all of these media kits you can download, right? So, for instance, let's download, um, what, uh, 64, Windows 64. We'll download that one. Let's also download Linux uh, 8664. Now, we could click on download and you download everything. But that's fairly large, and we don't really want to do all that you know, for our demo. This is the download, uh, the file that you're going to install. This is an um, a, uh, a extractor that installs the software on your computer, on your Windows server computer. Click Next, or Extract, rather. And finally, when it extracts and you click on Setup, it's going to give you this this splash screen here. You're going to accept the terms of the license agreement and click next. And then you're going to install the packages and click next. You're going to select custom individual components to be installed. Click next. You're going to click on the comserve and the workflow followed by the resource pack and click next. Then we're going to designate a database engine path. The database is of course Microsoft SQL and click next. You're then going to specify the Microsoft SQL Server database installation path and click next. 
and finally the destination of the actual Sampana software itself. Then click Next. This is a summary of the installation selections, the packages it's going to install, telling you before it installs, I'm going to install this. The selected packages are ComServe, the Resource Pack, the Windows File System, and the Workflow Engine. By default, when you install the ComServe, the File System, Windows File System, is also installed as well. You're going to click Next, and it's going to follow you through the um, bar on what it's doing, and it usually takes about 30 minutes to an hour to download. And of course, it downloads a version of SQL Server as well on your on your server. Then you get to the ComServe name. You're going to identify the client name or the host name of the ComServe in both boxes. The client name of the ComServe and the host name of the ComServe. And again, this is on a Windows domain controller or a Windows server that has 80 permissions. Finally, the firewall configurations. You're going to click on No, Do Not Disable Firewall, Windows Firewall at this time, and click Next. Finally, you're going to add the exclusion, the software to the pro programs to the Windows Firewall exclusion list, and click Next. Finally, the database path location for the database files, the Sampana database files, and click Next. Finally, the ComServe database. You're going to click, you're going to create a new database, and you're going to click Next. This is for the disaster recovery path. So basically, that is your settings, all of your information about your ComServe. You're going to specify a path to where you back up those settings and configurations for the, of the ComServe. Click Next. This is the username and password they're going to use to access the ComVault ComServe software. And click Next. And it's going to be installing. And click through this. And of course, you are complete. Completion report. The setup is complete. You have now successfully set up ComVault. To view what you have done, you first will click on Start on your computer and then go to ComVault and then click on Sampana Act Administrative Console. Once you do that, you're going to be prompted for a username and password. The ComCell ID or ComCell domain name should be highlighted already. Then you are in to your ComServe system now. As you can see, it is very robust, very nice. You've now successfully installed ComVault. The ComVault installation of version 10 is successful. I'm going to be installing the Windows File Agent on a Windows server. This is to back up the file system of that box. First things first, you hard have, based on the other video, you've been through, you've installed Commvault, so you understand how it works. So once you have it, you're going to install it on the Windows server itself, the one that you're actually going to be backing up, the file system itself. So once you do that, you're going to accept the terms uh, in the license agreement and click Next. You're going to do the click on the installation install packages. You're going to click on custom install or custom. You're going to highlight the file system and file system core uh, check marks. This is going to enable you to, to back up the Windows Server file system and all of its files inside of it. You click Next. You need the destination folder where the programs are going to be run, meaning the Commvault, uh, Commvault light, uh, software itself is going to be run. Define that and push Next. And finally, you're, this is going to summarize 
what you're going to be installing. You selected the packages, the file system core, Windows file system, where it's going to be installed at, what is the interface name, what's the client name, and you in click install. It's going to go through its steps installing the software. Afterwards, you're going to be left with the firewall configuration. It's best just to click next on this one. And here we go. You're going to be needing the ComServe name, meaning you're going to have the ComServe, excuse me, the Windows file agent be able to talk to the ComServe so that it can back it up. You're going to identify that ComServe host name and you're going to click next. It's going to be, this is the portion where you set up the, the communication pass to the ComServe meaning you're going to select the client name and you're going to select the interface that the computer will use to communicate with the ComServe and click next. You're going to do your firewall configurations and it's best to click no do not disable Windows firewall and click next. Then you're going to do the client certificate usually it's since there's no clients we're going to install we're going to click next. Finally the Windows firewall exclusion list. This is it's best to add the program to the firewall exclusion list and click next. Since we don't have any client groups set up, excuse me, since I've taken the liberty of already setting up the client groups, you can just create your own client groups and add your client group as needed. In our case we set up a Windows client group and we're going to select the client group of Windows and click Next. We're going to select the default uh, U cell level policy for the global filters. And then we have not yet set up a storage policy or a storage interface, storage policy. Therefore, we're just going to click through this Next. And the configuration has been complete. So this is a completion report. Sampana software has been installed on version test successfully. In order to test this, we're going to log into our ComServe and we should see that our Windows client has been added to the client groups. This concludes the tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to learn about how to install a Windows client, Media Agent client, on a ComServe version 10. Let's get started. You've seen this screen before, obviously. This is the Accept Terms and uh, License uh, to the Com Vault uh, software. So we're going to click Next on that guy. Deal. Um, excuse me. Now Install Packages. And followed by Custom. Then we're going to click on uh, Media Agent because we're going to install the Media Agent client on here and you are going to specify the destination where you're going to install that on that server and it's going to start installing um, then um, you're going to configure the firewall settings so you can leave this blank essentially firewall configuration we're going to leave that blank click next um, this is the com serve you identify you're telling the media agent. I want to talk to this ComServe basically and that's where I identify that. Click Next and then this is where you define the media agent name of the client. The media agent name, excuse me, so the Windows media agent. In our case it's Window Win Media Agent and click Next. Uh, we are not, we're gonna do not disable firewall for this and click Next and again, this is the same thing as a client or a, um, well, the same thing as a client. We're going to click next on the CA cert. And here is where we're going to, again, same thing as before for this lab purpose. We're going to add the program to the firewall, Windows firewall exemption list. You just want it to be really smooth when you're first starting it up. And you'll open it all up let it be happy, let it talk to each other, and then lock it down. That usually that's how, how it goes. And um, so we're going to add it to the client group of Windows 
and click next. We're going to leave the default of using the cell policy. We're not going to add it to any storage policies because the uh, we haven't set up storage policies yet, so we're just going to leave that blank. And this is the report, a configuration report of what we installed. We've installed a media agent on a Windows server. Uh, and then again, um, log into the Sempana, uh, the, the ComServe itself, and then you'll get this. And you can see that we have the Windows Media Agent. So it, ideally, what happens is when you install the Media Agent, Windows Media Agent, it'll install a file uh, file agent as well. So what you have here is you have it added in two places. as a client computer and also as a media agent. So um, obviously it's, uh, it's red right now. We haven't set it up all the way. But it's been installed, so it's good to go. I'd like to thank you for viewing this tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to install the Linux client on an Ubuntu server. First things first, you need the software in order to install it on a Ubuntu server. So we're going to install it on a Windows client. We're going to download it from Windows client and then install it on a Windows on a Ubuntu server. So first things first, you're going to accept the license agreement after in clicking install, of course. You're going to download the packages. You're going to choose the destination of the download packages. You're going to select the operating system type. In this regard, you're going to select Unix slash Linux. You're then going to choose your flavor of Linux or Unix. In our case, it's we're going to choose FreeBSD because that's compatible with Ubuntu. We're going to choose select packages. We're not going to choose them all. We're just going to do selective packages. Then we're going to choose the file system core, file system, the MySQL iData agent, and the resource pack. The download software components following software is going to be downloaded in a tar file. So let's go ahead and click download. It's going to process the tar file, zip it up, and then finally present it to us and throw it in the downloads folder. So in this regard the tar file is a CV downloads tar file. So we must recognize that we need to know our IP address is accurate on our Ubuntu server. Let's head over to Ubuntu server and just make sure that's right. So we're going to click on Ubuntu server. We're going to click on after we get into sudo, we're going to click on we're going to type nano space slash etsy etc slash hosts. That's going to tell us what is our current local host name on our local Ubuntu name. So we're going to remove that entry. We're going to replace it with the IP address of the Ubuntu server and the IP address of the ComServe server as noted by Ubuntu and Windows server and save that. Then we're going to need to download the version of WinZip, excuse me, WinSCP as I were. Then you download that on your Windows computer and that enables us to actually send the files over to the Ubuntu client. We're going to um, type in the IP address, the username and the password of the Ubuntu server and then we're left with a from and to. The C downloads package location and we're going to install that file, that tar file in the temp folder of our Ubuntu server. We're then going to ls, meaning list the CV downloads tar file. We're then going to run a tar xvf space cv downloads tar to extract the files. 
we're going to then list ls, the files, and we're going to change directory to the CV downloads folder. Then we're in the temp folder now, CV downloads. We're going to list the files inside the CV downloads, and we're going to run the dot slash CV package add file. When you do that, it's going to install the Unix installer. And we're going to click on enter to start. We're going to accept the terms of license agreement. Click or type yes. This is going to select the Unix sele uh, setup tasks. We're going to inst one install data protection agents on this computer. We're then going to type in the physical client name of the machine uh, client physical machine host name meaning it's Ubuntu is the the host name rather we're going to then define what software do you want to download we're going to download we're going to install the file system core and the file system on this Ubuntu and also the resource pack so you just put an X in that section. Do you want to configure the iData agent for laptop or desktop backups? We're going to select no in this regard. Do you want to install the agents for restore only? We're going to click no because we don't want to do that. Then it's going to tell us where we want to install the software. We're going to put this in the opt directory and where do we want our log files to go usually the all the log files usually are on var slash log we're going to leave that default the unix group if we want to put our client in a specific group we're not going to do that we're going to push no, click no and then this is the setup permissions for group or other users we're going to leave everything uh, default or all, checked all. And it's going to copy the applied updates, the binaries. The instance, meaning the port numbers, by default, Commvault has 8400, uses 8400, 8401, and 8402. And we're going to leave it as default, 8402. Uh, 8400 rather, excuse me, 8402. And this is going to ask us if we're going to configure the firewall. There is no firewall between the client and the comm server, so we're going to leave this at no. Finally, we need to let the client know what the comm serve ID or the comm serve host name is. So we're going to define the comm serve host name and it's Windows Server, it, whatever it is in your case, but in my case it's Windows Server dot domain name dot com. We're then going to do where you click on the CA certificate authority authentication. We're going to click no on this. Finally it's going to be installing the com ser uh, the information. It's going to contact the, the com server it's going to read the files, the data center comm serve install manager, and it's just going to do its basic checks to see if it can talk to the comm serve. We're then going to select the use cell level po policy, and then also a client group. In this regard, I know I said earlier we weren't going to set it in a group, but unfortunately we are we are actually going to put it in a group client group the unix linux client group which i've already pre pre set up before it's going to apply its updates it's going to install its packages and you're left with your thank you for choosing convolt and it's going to review it's going to tell you what it's installed and in order to check that you log into your comm serve and you would see under client groups you would see your Ubuntu client or Ubuntu server listed there. 
Thank you for watching this tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be installing the media agent on a Unix client. So you've actually you've done the last section, so you know that you need to install CV package on your Unix client. You need to move the file over to the Unix client or the Unix media agent in this regard. So once you've done that, now you're ready, you're at the step. You're at the step where you've downloaded, you've chosen the software you need to uh, download, you've chosen the packages, in the, and you've chosen the media agent portion as well. So you see this, the difference here, you've, you've selected a different package to install, now you see that the media agent is, is selected. So that you push, put an X in the media agent after you've downloaded the files and let's click next so this is going to be installing the media agent so you're going to be prompted install agents for restore only you're going to choose no and this is the location that we're going to install the media agent of the unix client linux client the opt folder same as the file agent as before similar the var log file similar installation point as the file agent. You want to specify a specific group. We're going to click no. We are going to set the permissions for the group. We're going to allow, uh, in this regard, we're going to allow all in that regard. We're going to specify the port numbers that it's going to be listening on or allowing us to access and in, in default Commvault's default is A400, A401, A402. There is no firewall between the client or the media agent and the comm serve. No. And the comm serve, you're going to need the comm serve host name uh, defined on this media agent as well. And the Pre-authentication certificate is enabled. We're not going to enforce the certificate authentication to the ComServe. Click no or type no. And finally, uh, excuse me, and the next step is the global filters. We're going to choose one, which is use cell level filters. And the client groups, we've already set up the client group, Unix Linux client group. So we're going to put this media agent in that group and click next or uh, enter, excuse me. Then we're uh, prompted with the download is complete uh, prompt, meaning thank you for choosing Commvault. You've downloaded the file, you've installed the media agent, all is well. So in order to check that, we're going to log into the comm serve on the Windows server. The, win the comm server is the window is a Windows server and we're going to check it out. So you probably are going to see that the media agent is grayed out and that's typical. So you right click on it, you go to all tasks and reconfigure and once you do that you're going to see it as green now. So you've just installed the media agent on the the Unix media agent uh, successfully. So thank you for viewing this tutorial. Thank you very much for taking time out of your day to view this tutorial and troubleshooting a common Linux media agent and common Linux file agent issues. So first things first, we're in the ComServe and I want to go to the registry of the ComServe because they want to show you where you would find the ComServe GUID ID for troubleshooting. You're going to click on uh, local machine then software, then you're going to go down to Commvault systems, then you're going to go to Galaxy instance 01 followed by comserve and these are the common things in the comserve setting so your console comserve client ID name it never changes whereas if you do the comserve host name that one you can change you can either add IP address a lot of times what you'll see is people adding um, dip switch settings even though their their client has this setting in it they'll still add a dip switch setting just to make it work. The other important thing is the GUID. 
ComServeGUID ID. That is to allow the Linux client or in another case the Windows client to talk to the ComServe. ComServe GUID should be the same on both instances for the client and also for the ComServe when communicating. So let's go over to our client and get started. So you notice I'm in Commvault now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the Linux job, or Linux client rather, go to properties, and normal function is that when you can when you can click on version and then uh, go to browse and if you can get into this then you know you're good um, then you know there's communicating between the comm server and the client that's the first thing if it doesn't work you got something else going on so you want to a lot of your software a lot of your software is located when you install it obviously you install it in the Simpana folder here when I made mention earlier of the base folder the ComServe GUID number that should match up. So what you should see is this number and the number on the registry should be the same. And I'll show you in the com vault here where you want to find that. Go to home, rather, uh, yeah, home and then control panel. Then you're going to click on certificate administration and you're going to see that that Linux clients there and that means it's talking to it it's active let's dive into the, to the Linux client itself close that minimize that and we're logged in so first things first a couple different troubleshooting steps you want to type in Simpana Simpana status that's going to give us an indication of Tell us a couple different things. So the ComServe name, uh, how the client sees the ComServe name, and how the client is named as well. So the host name, it's. And we can go over to the client itself on the ComServe, and I can show you what this representation of is here. Click on properties, and as you see, the host name is Linux client, which is matches this one here. And the ComServe hostname is the Com ComVault server matches. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on, uh, we're going to type in Simpana uh, list. So that's going to give us an indication of what's running on the box itself, the Linux box. We're just, you've troubleshot everything, you've gotten everything working, you set some dip switch settings, everything seems to be working, but just not uh, coming coming about. So let me let me show you a couple things. I want to go first CD, Etsy, then Commvault. Uh, okay, then we go. Uh, what, what is it? What is it? Instance, I think it is. No. Let me type it real quick. What am I? Oh, Galaxy. Galaxy. Then we're gonna go Instance, zero zero one. Then followed by ComServe. Now we're gonna do Cat Properties to view the ComServe GUID, which is this guy right here. So this should match what we have in the ComServe itself. But everything's good there. Let's uh, let's just hop on over our registry and just compare the two. Okay, it looks right. Yep, good times. Okay, good. So we can get out of this. Let's say, for instance, some of your troubleshooting steps, you need to reboot it. You need to restart your service. You don't want to do the whole thing. So you do a perform a um, Simpana restart or a Simpana start, Simpana stop. Let's do a Simpana stop. Okay, stopping all the jobs. You can also do a. You can also do a Simpana start, Simpana Pana, and that starts the in, starts the services for that as well. And you can also perform a Simpana restart. Simpana restart. Yep, good times. Another thing that might be beneficial is if you wanted to, um, if you, for instance, you can't talk, you want to see if you can talk to the com server. So every client should be able to talk to the com server. So we'll do like, we'll do that real quick. I'll show you that. 
We'll go CD, then op folder, then Simpana, then we'll go to the base directory. So in there, there is a file called um, cvping, so dot slash cvping. No. And then we'll go um, 172. This is the comserve IP address. Oh, uh, right. So dot slash cvping. Yeah, 172.30.1.9. Okay, so you notice that little uh, port number there. So if you just designate the port number, it'll ping it. 8401, 8402, 8403, 8404 probably will fail. So Commvault usually uses 8400 through 8403 not 8404. I mean you can designate it, you can tell it what to do uh, in the firewall setting as well if you desire to do that. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for taking time out of your day to learn about how to install the virtual agent and the web interface on the ComServe. So I, I've assumed, uh, I'll assume that some of you have already watched my videos on how to install ComServe, how to get it from the internet, uh, how to download it, etc. And I won't waste your time by going over that. Uh, I'll just follow up. This one will start with uh, the installation portion and um, the what to what to click on right when you when you want to get those different types of features that we're going after. Obviously, we want to get the ComServe. We want to get the um, web console and then the uh, ComSell console. We also want to capture the uh, web server and workflow is we're looking for that and then also the uh, virtual server agent is what we're after and followed up by the resource pack and once you have all that it's pretty much um, if you watch my other videos it's next 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 and put a couple things in um, and uh, we're gonna pick up our next video our next portion of this is when you log in uh, you know, assuming you've already installed everything Hello everyone, now that we've installed Commvault, we're going to start by logging into it. First let's make sure it's turned on, that's when you go to the process manager. And you can tell by uh, the process manager that most things are turned off. So for this one we're going to turn it on, turn them, turn them on, restart them rather. Okay, looks like all services are up and running. We're going to um, now log in. And close that if you want. Log into our com serve. Okay, so now we're going to log into the uh, com serve here. Probably one of the first things you're going to want to do when you when you bring up your ComServe is you're going to want to add a um, um, domain to it, right? So you're going to do that real quick here. And since I already have a uh, domain admin account, I'm going to use that. Kind of tricky, uh, and then enable SSO. Yes. Uh, what you want to do in this right here? Well, there's no. It hasn't been propagated yet because you haven't logged in. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna actually add that user when we log in to the master group. We have to log in as um, we have to log, try to first log in as SSO for me uh, mesh text, and then we have to log in uh, back in as admin because it's going to fail here. So it, you're going to see it fail, probably. But no, it will fail. Yeah, yeah. So to remedy this, log in as admin.
because I'm logged in as a um, I'm logged in as this user here on my domain so um, yeah logged in and to fix to be able to log in as um, SSO single sign-on rather you can add to this user here you want to let's see okay right click on um, user groups go to master go to users and then add that user that you've just created or logged in as rather to that group and you can see him in there now so now when we close this we go back into the application the Commvault application excuse me here single sign on will work this time and once you're logged in um, as a single sign on you just you know that's 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 what you want right that's exactly what you want a couple different things you can do with with Commvault um, in this instance what we're going to do is we're going to add uh, we're going to add a uh, since we've installed a virtual agent on this we're going to install a virtual uh, the vCenter so I, th I have to go in and actually start my vCenter my vCenter is not turned on so I'm going to um, pause the video and come back to that okay so when I left off, I didn't yet had my com, or I'm sorry, my vCenter wasn't turned on. I've turned it on now, and um, so I'm going to add it here. Basically, I want to, essentially, I want to back up all my, my VMs. So my vCenter knows all about my host and my VMs, so that's what I'm going to add here, right? And I did it a little differently since I'm. This is a VM itself that I'm talking to you on. This comp server is a, v, a VM. Um, the IP addresses are different, so I've had to actually create another interface on this uh, this VM to point that it can see my hosts and it can see my vCenter. So that's why it looks a little differently. Um, why I have to put an IP address here? Let's see. And you can add um, your client groups. You can. We'll go into this later, but I'm just going to add it to say media agents. It can be any any anything really. And how you verify it's all working is click on properties. You're going to click on uh, content, and then you're going to preview. So it's going to give you a list of all everything the vCenter sees, all the VMs the vCenter sees, and you know you can go ahead and back them up as you like. You can add to filter, you know whatever you want to do. You can filter them. You can create um, different jobs, security, uh, your storage device. I don't have anything uh, set up yet. I don't have a uh, storage um, interface set up yet, so. I'm gonna omit that one. Uh, so I've already installed the web web interface. So I'm just gonna click on uh, under home, then web console, and this is gonna pull up your information about your com serve. Why is this useful? Whenever you have large of in, a lot of individuals uh, accessing the com serve, they need a report, they need whatever. What what this is is a representation like a like a website representation of the com serve um, so they can you know if they're in a meeting they can pull on their data maybe they pull the reports or whatever and as you can see well let's for instance look we'll on uh, my data I don't have anything backed up so it's probably gonna it's not gonna yield anything you know yep not gonna yield anything and my virtual machines and don't know if it'll have anything here or not I don't think so, no. No, nope, won't, sure won't. 
and you know your reports you know if you want to you click on reports or create custom reports you know if you're a, a user uh, end user need to, again need to present a report to a team or whatever you click uh, custom reports and it would be from there in later video I'm going to dive more into this so you can actually see what's what's going on and you'll notice that I'm logged in as admin so in order to get the vCenter to work I had to log in as a local account so that's why you see it otherwise you'd see the meshed the uh, domain account there okay uh, well this concludes the video